Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play The Wind Waker HD. We're at Windfall Island. It's a bit stormy and we're just standing out in the rain. I guess we don't have that much common sense, but you know, I don't need it to save the world, I guess. Just bravery and a nice sharp sword. So, uh, it's been a little while, a couple of weeks, if you need a refresher. Uh, we have uh, just been informed. We tried to go to Great Fish Isle to see the Great Spirit Jaboon and get the next pearl, but have learned from the Rito Postman that he has evacuated and can now be found at Outside Isle, Outset Isle. Uh, the island that we started at, we've uh, raided the pirate ship to get their bombs, and now we're good to go. So this is the point, I left it here for a reason, and I now remember that reason. This is the point where the world is basically completely open to you. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I'm, I'm like 99% sure this is right, we have no more limitations on where we can go. Um, remember before, uh, we would always, if we tried to sail too far in one direction, the King of Red Lions would say, Hey, we're not supposed to go here yet, turn around. This time he will say no such thing. Uh, we can do whatever we want. Of course, some items and stuff on islands are going to be locked based on, you know, we don't have the correct item to deal with stuff. That's just going to happen. But, you know, for example, if we wanted, we could go to every single square on this map and feed the fish and get every single map square filled out if we wanted. I'm not going to do that because that's incredibly time consuming and we'll be visiting these islands multiple times anyway. So my focus here is a little bit more on efficiency. There are even going to be some things we can do now that I don't do just because they're so far out of the way. We need to be heading to Outset. That's obviously our next destination. So along the way, you know, if there's islands around here, I'll go ahead and grab that and then we'll kind of head meander in this direction and then head over, you know. So it, it's, it's a little meandering, but there is a purpose behind all of it. So... Just trust me, I know what I'm doing. I know there are probably things that you'll say, well, you know, you could go to this island and do this now, but I know it's just not really time efficient to do it. Maneuverability will be a little bit better later on and we'll take care of it then. Okay, so our first stop is actually going to be to the southeast. So remember our, uh, our favorite compass, that would be in this direction, I believe. Check the map to be sure. Hey, and I'm right. So we're going to head to this island right here. There's also going to be a lot of sailing, which means I have no idea what the timing is going to be like on this episode. Uh, I do run a timer, so I know how long we'll be going, but I'm not sure how much we'll get accomplished because it very much depends on uh, what we can actually get done. <laughs> so I'm hoping we can get to the outset by or to the outset to outset uh, by the end of this. Uh, I hope so. I don't know if that's going to actually happen or not, but uh, that's kind of the idea. All right, so uh, a couple things here. We've actually got a uh, chart treasure to pick up, if I'm not mistaken. It should be treasure chart number three. Uh, you can see it's a hard island. This is a fairy island you may have seen. Um, yep, there it is <laughs> in the distance. Also, it's going to be storming this whole time with creepy music. I'm sorry. This is just where we are in the story. You also notice that our sort of our day-night little counter down there at the bottom left is never switching from night. The pirate said we had until morning, and as you may have guessed, it is never actually going to be morning. So we don't have to worry about that at all. First things first, let's uh, get the fish here. We will be stopping by and getting the fish on basically all of these islands. So uh, we might as well. Let's go ahead and I gotta get some bait out here. A little bit cumbersome. I should have bought some more bait at the store while I was there, but we'll get an opportunity to do that later. For now, we have enough to do us until we get to another shop ship, for sure. All right, so to fill out the chart for this island, we're going to get this little sideways heart. It is Eastern Fairy Island. Which does hint that there will be fairy islands in other directions. So this guy's going to tell us a hint about the auction. Finally, we get a hint about something that we have already done. So, hey, what do you know? So, extra fast sail. Yep, already got it, man. Step ahead of you. A couple steps ahead of you, actually. So, never really says anything else too important there. So, we've got a uh, treasure to pick up. It looks like it's a little bit too... I would like to have seen the pillar, but I guess I can uh, eyeball it here. So, east from here. A little bit more south. And that's probably good. And it's close. Oops, I didn't mean to hop out. <laughs> Just dive down there and get it ourselves. There we go. So you can use the map. I kind of like to just see the pillar of light and then judge it based on that. It's a little quicker. and doesn't involve flipping back and forth between the map, but, you know, whatever gets it done. All right, so silver rupee there. We now have... We, we managed to get a whopping one rupee out of that because our wallet is pretty much full, but, well, what can you do, I guess? It's not like rupee's going to be too big of a problem for a while anyway. 
All right, so we are going to hop up on the island. There's stuff we can do. Bombs opens up a lot of things. I guess bombs open, but <laughs> getting bombs opens up a whole bunch of things. We also notice one of our Korok buddies here. I think we've seen one of these guys out on the open seas before, but uh, he's come here to plant the Deku tree seed. But look. Yeah, in fact, I'm pretty sure that we have uh, seen these guys before. But yeah, they're trying to plant these trees out here. Uh, they want some water from the forest haven. We'll take care of that later, of course. I'm sorry about your plight, but the uh, tree's not going anywhere, so we can save it later. And uh, we're going to use our newfound bombs here. I think this is the first use of them. They just work like bomb flowers. Pull one out, set it down, blow up some rocks. You know how it works. Nice little chime plays, and we can drop in. So this is the uh, the Great Fairy's uh, sort of abode here in this version of the game. I like this design. It's pretty cool. Uh, reminds me a lot of that ice cavern in Ocarina of Time, except obviously a little bit more animated and not quite as cold. But it brings sort of the same feeling, you know? Uh, that room where I guess that would be where you learned the, the song that warped you to the lake. So it kind of reminds me of that. But this is also... I also really like this uh, version of the Great Fairies that is in this game much better than the ones that are in Ocarina of Time of Majora's Mask, like really pointy, <laughs> like women dressed in vines or something. Like I, I get what they were going for, but I don't know. I kind of feel like seeing something like that in this game would be a little bit awkward. So uh, I'm pretty glad that they actually decided to go with a different design. And I like the four arms too. That's kind of neat. So she blows some flower petals on me. And we get a bomb bag. I, it just materialized out of nowhere, I guess. Now we can carry more bombs. We can bring a maximum of 60 with you. And it turns out we're actually going to get the final bomb upgrade pretty soon as well. They give you those very fast for whatever reason. I guess because it's just locked behind exploration. Okay, and she also leaves behind a bunch of fairies if we need them. I mean, we've got an empty bottle, but we don't need a fairy. So we'll just leave them be and just sort of frolic in peace here in this fountain. All right, so now we gotta find the boat. This is always the hardest part. Okay, where did it put my boat? All right, there he is. All right, hop back in, and we're off to the next island. This is basically going to be the pace of at least the next couple of episodes, uh, except for the bit where we get into the main story. So now we're going to head back to the west a little bit. Remember, our objective is sort of southwest, so we're gonna, you know, meander in that direction. So we're gonna head to the west a couple of squares, which means this is probably a good chance for some editing. All right, we've roughly arrived at our destination. This is an island that we've passed by before. We're not actually going to stop on it this time either. There's nothing we really need to do on the island itself. I'm going to look for the fish. I saw him jumping around here before. Oh, no, okay, he's way out there. If we can time this right, it's actually possible to just sail right by him and then drop the bait and stop instantly. I kind of like that. It's a little bit quicker. And this is Tingle Island. Also, uh, you remember Tingle, of course, from Windfall Island. And also the shape of the island is a little bit in the shape of his head. And we get a little bit of a rundown here. A uh, guy lives there is named Tingle. He won't grow up and act his age. He still dresses like a little kid. From what I hear, though, he can decipher maps like nobody's business. Of course, when I think about him is when it comes time to pay his deciphering fee, you'd better be ready to fork over some serious dough. Anyone who doesn't have a deep wallet won't be reading any maps, and that's for sure. So, yep. You'll need rupees in the future. Remember that. All right. So like I said, we don't have anything to do actually on the islands. Uh, so we're going to actually head to the north here and keep a lookout. It can be a little bit hard to spot the exact thing I'm looking for, especially when it's storming and raining like this because there's just like so much noise everywhere. But um, it would also be really nice if I could get rid of this guy. So let's see. Drop the boomerang. There we go. <laughs> Uh, you also may notice, uh, yeah, here we go. So this is what we're looking for uh, whenever we approach these little flocks of seagulls coming up. This giant octo appears, and this is where we're going to get to actually use our bombs on the water. Uh, whenever we try to use the bombs in the boat, that's when it will uh, sort of turn into this cannon that we can use to fire at distant targets. So obviously the targets we're aiming for are these eyes. This is actually one of the harder one of these. Obviously there's going to be a bunch of these out on the open sea. And uh, you have to defeat all of its eyes, basically, in order to uh, get it to go back down. I like to, if you try to hit it while it's moving, you will probably miss, and that'll cause it to shake around a little bit, unless it's one of the lower ones and stays fairly stable. 
So we've got a couple passes. It's not super important that we um, get them all like before going around once. We've got a couple tries here. You don't have too long though. So I think there's only that one left that's on the top. So we should have a pretty clean shot at it once we get around. Right here. That should work. And down he goes. Now, I've read around that you can also use the boomerang for this, but I never really got, like, you can hit the things with the boomerang. It will target them, and, you know, it'll sound like he's getting hurt, but it just seems like the eyes never die if I do that, so I just stick with using the bombs. It's easy enough, and you get good practice at uh, being able to aim stuff, so now that that's done, we can pick up the treasure that he left behind. It's probably about right there. Get another heart piece, the fourth piece, completing another heart container, and we get another heart. So we're doing pretty good there. All right, so next up, we're going to be heading to the north, a couple of squares. So again, I will see you there. All right, we're vaguely approaching the space we need to go to. You can see our pointy island in the distance. Yes, this is another fairy island. So we've got a lot of things to do here, actually. We can take care of a number of things. First off, treasure chart 24 is going to be here. So, uh, you know, as usual, our first order of business, we'll probably just grab the fish. So if we can find it as we're sailing up here, that'd be nice, so we don't have to look around for it. Okay, he's way over there. He jumped pretty high out of the water there. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. I know I could go ahead and stop at the island, but again, I like to just take care of the fish first, because if I lose him, I will very easily actually forget where he is and then waste a bunch of time looking around. So let's uh, not the boomerang. Let's keep the boomerang, though. I like having that around. It helps on the sea sometimes. Oh, hello. This is Northern Fairy Island. I guess it makes sense. We're in pretty much the northernmost row, so it can't get much more northern than this. So the little shopmaster in Windfall Island apparently got his hands on a truly amazing treasure. He calls it the magic armor. Oh, man, that sounds good. <laughs> yeah, sure. Thanks for the advice. So, yep, that's going to be a result of dealing with the shopkeeper. Like I said, we're going to deal with that eventually. Uh, not quite for right now. That, that sort of applies to just about most of the stuff. Uh, that these fish are going to tell us about. So there's a ship over there that's going to be firing at us, so we don't want to, you know, stay still for too long, but uh, otherwise not much of a threat. I'm going a little too fast. Uh, way too fast, I think. Yep, <laughs> I passed it by a pretty good margin. All right, right here should be good. Let's move it to the other side and drop. This chest is going to contain a silver rupee. Turns out it would have actually been smarter to uh, save this treasure until after we get what we get here, but well, you know, then that is what it is. I just kind of went for whatever was closest. So uh, you'll see in a minute. You may have been able to guess by my comment, but we are going to stop by on this island here and pick something up. Uh, this one actually does not have any barrier, so technically as soon as you get free reign, you can just come out here and grab this upgrade. There's nothing stopping you. So, another fairy fountain looks pretty much the same. But this time it's a little pink fairy, I guess. The last one was kind of blue, wasn't it? Also turns the whole room pink, which is pretty interesting. So this fairy's upgrade is going to give us the uh, upgraded wallet. Now we can hold up to a thousand rupees. Probably would have been smarter again for me to save that uh, 200 rupee pickup until we actually had room for it. But well, uh, what can you do? Rupees, I've said it before, rupees are really not gonna be that much of a problem. So uh, I'll let that one go. Now, even though we've gotten what's on the island as well as a chart treasure here, we're still actually not done in this map square. There's one more thing we want to do, so if I'm not mistaken, this should be to the northwest. So we want to head over in this direction, right through the island, unfortunately. And uh, you may have been able to see it with that last lightning flash out there, but uh, we are actually heading to another submarine. So just a quick little jaunt over here, not too far. And we're pretty much approaching the edge of the world. We can't really go too much more north than this, so... Again, these lookouts that do absolutely nothing. 
we can hop up and go inside to grab its treasure. So this one's a little bit interesting. You can see we've got a bunch of these guys down below and some uh, lantern ropes here. And obviously the goal is just to swing back and forth. This is basically just exactly the trial on the pirate ship, but you know, I guess the uh, the stakes are a little bit more dangerous because you'll fall down into a bunch of enemies. But you know, if we do this correctly and don't freak out, then this is actually pretty easy. It's actually easier than that trial was even because there are way fewer ropes and most of them are pretty much in a straight line. I'm going to make sure that we're at the bottom to get full swinging arc here. Oh man, I, I got a little bit cute there. I was a little worried I wasn't going to make it, but we did. All right, hop off, and once we go inside, there's a the treasure. Now, this is a little bit, this always, this got me a little bit the first time, uh, because whenever you just stand out there, there's nothing inside. You have to walk in for the treasure chest to actually spawn. You don't have to kill things or anything, but... You know, you get over there and it's like, oh, well, there's not a treasure in there. I guess I have to kill these things. But either way, we get a treasure chart from that, so totally worth it. And we could swing back out, but what do you say we have some fun? Let's fight all these guys. This is a fun fight anyway when you've got a lot of them. Especially because their swings are so wide, they hit each other a lot. <laughs> so it gets to be a little bit chaotic when people are just being knocked around everywhere. So I like to try to get one on the edge. That was bad. I was trying to counter, but that was not a counterable attack. All right, this probably isn't a good place. No, that didn't work. <laughs> but <laughs> he just took out all his friends for me, so thanks. There we go. Watch out for the uppercut. There we are. Ah, I, I'm, I don't like that counter. It's, I clearly hit the button while that A prompt was still on screen, but for some reason it just doesn't work sometimes. I'm not really a huge fan of that particular counter anyway, because rolling around them can actually be fairly dangerous. <laughs> he hit that guy behind him. That's great. Oh, nice. I got both of them. You're the only one left, pal. Oh, I really should have been getting the skull necklaces, but I think, yeah, it looks like they all dropped orbs anyway. So I always forget. Like, I know I need skull necklaces, but never remember to grab them so now that wasn't too bad and of course we get plenty of health recovery afterwards i just always think that fight's too fun to skip out on you know because when there's a bunch of guys with wide area of effects and they can hit each other it's just so much fun all right so we'll grab all our spoils here we've also refilled on bombs which is good we've got a handful of rupees 77 to be exact and now we can leave but that fight is completely optional if you know you hate fun uh, you can just skip all of that entirely and swing your way back out or just run away and get on the ladder. It's about all the same. All right, so now we are finally done here. We're actually going to head to the west one, so point in this direction. And uh, not quite as far to travel, but I'll see you when we get there. So on this next island, we're going to picking up uh, chart number seven. So we'll go ahead and open that, and we can see there it is. Now, this one can be pretty dangerous. Obviously, these red flashing barrels here. Uh, will, you know, explode if you get too near them. So I advise taking it slow here. It's very tempting to use the fast sail to get to some of this stuff quickly. You'll also probably have to use the map on this if you're wanting to take it slow. It's a little bit hard to judge if you take forever to get there. So a little bit further. Here's good, and we'll stop. Oh, no, I did not mean to put the sail out. Okay, well, that's fine. Hit a little too many buttons. It happens. This should be good. Let's actually grab the treasure this time instead of sailing away. And we get another silver rupee. So we are already testing out our brand new wallet. I've also got to find the fish. I didn't do that on the way over. There it is. Thankfully, he was jumping around. So we know where he is. We can just grab him later because we do need to do something on this island. It stopped a little far away. Let's, let's not go so far. It may have been quicker to just keep swimming, but oh well. All right, so this is, uh, we haven't quite picked out the uh, the chart yet, but this is called Star Island, and you can probably see why. Uh, so we're going to need the bomb. I think it's this rock. Yeah, it should be this rock right here, this big one. There's a bunch of other stuff around here, but I don't think it has too much. One of these does hide a blue chew under it, if I'm not mistaken, so... You know, you may want to grab that, but like I've said before, I'm not too concerned. This one does have a hole underneath it, though. Yeah. 
And this can be a little bit boring because this combat is pretty easy. You may have noticed that there's a bunch of uh, like cavern mouths up there that enemies are going to be coming out of. We basically just need to defeat everything. This can take a little while. Also, you may have seen that indicator at the bottom. My battery is low on my Pro Controller. So I have to plug that in between videos, but uh, it should be fine for the time being. We don't have too much longer in this video anyway. So more guys are gonna come out of it, but they're just basic enemies that we don't even really have to inform a strategy for. I did get hit there, but no big deal. I will also put the grappling hook on, uh, so that way maybe I'll at least remember to grab something if a material shows up that I need. Though right now it's just these guys. I only dropped joy pendants. All right, let's stab these guys a few times. Pretty easy. <laughs> like I said, this combat is nothing too complicated. All right, well, these guys are at least a little bit more fun. Two of them at a time is not quite as difficult as four, but, well, better than one, I guess. All right, so let's grab these skull necklaces while I'm remembering so we don't have to rely on chance for them to drop. Nice. <laughs> the double whammy. And uppercut me. There you go. <laughs> Little overzealous there. He didn't even hit me. I didn't move to avoid that. He just missed. Me. There we go. Counter after the fact. A little bit late, but for some reason they still let you do that. block there. I could have actually counted at the end of that one, too. But. Right, one more left. I think these guys actually can pick up some of the other weapons, but uh, they probably prefer the spears, I guess. Alright, so looks like that's going to take care of them both. And we get the treasure. That one's pretty simple. Like I said, the combat is not too tough there. But those guys are always fun to fight, so I won't complain. Grab our quarter of a heart back that we lost. And it is also pretty great when you fight these types of enemies that after you're finished with them, there's just weapons strewn about everywhere. <laughs> Makes you feel kind of cool, right? And obviously no dead bodies laying around or anything, but you still get to see the aftermath of all the stuff they dropped. And we get a piece of heart for that as well. Nice. So on one of four again for our next container. And that's all there is to do here. Still need to get the fish. Don't forget that. But that's uh, basically going to be it for this island. So again, I've got... Where do they put my boat? There it is. Now I have to remember in what direction that fish was in. I wanted to say it was over here. But again, if it moved my boat, I'm not really sure where anything is relatively. I will look around for a brief second. So like I said, that is Star Island. Let's see what kind of hint he's got for us. Somewhere out in the wide world is a handy arrow that can freeze anything. Ice arrows? Really? In a Zelda game? No way. Hmm, I see. Give that thing a whack and watch it shatter into teeny tiny pieces. That's a little bit violent, but <laughs> I think I get the gist. Alright, so that's all he's got. Next up, we're going to be heading south one square. All right, we're coming up on our next style. You notice the giant twister out there. I think we've mentioned it before, but don't go anywhere near that thing. It'll throw you away, of course. So uh, we do have a treasure chart to pick up here. It's number 29, if I'm not mistaken. So let's see. Yep, that appears to be. I can tell just by the map. This island is a little bit of a special island. We couldn't land here even if we wanted. You see there's high walls everywhere. So really all that's left to do here is, uh, for the moment at least, is just to grab the fish and then grab the treasure. I guess we can grab the treasure first since we already see it. Oh, that's way too fast. This thing about the swift sail is like, <laughs> I guess I understand it is hard to break in water, but <laughs> I would like to slow down a little bit quicker. Okay, so right about here should be good. Let's see what we got. And it's another silver rupee, so already it turns out 
We've maxed out our new wallet. We just got a new one and I already need another. All right, so we still need the fish here. I assume it's not going to be directly in the path of that twister out there. And it looks like it's over here. So let's just drop some off. I like doing that, just the sudden stop. I'm not, if you can stop suddenly to drop bait, why not stop suddenly otherwise, right? To spend so long slowing down. So this is Mother and Child Isles, and it makes sense. There's a big island and a small island. Uh, whoever names these knows what they're doing. So uh, this guy's going to give us a little bit more intel on what's on this island. The inside of that ring of rock, uh, there lives an incredibly beautiful fairy. It just so happens we've seen a couple of those along the way, but nobody's ever met her. Supposedly the only way you'll ever meet her is to take a ride on a whirlwind and drop inside that rock perimeter from the sky above. Doesn't sound easy. Yeah, you're right about that. So... Gonna have to find some way to drop in from above. That's not really something we're capable of right now, so... You may have guessed that that large twister might have something to do with it, but... No, blindly running into it is not actually going to help you. So, uh, now it looks like we're gonna go south one more time. So let's, uh, get out of here. And... <laughs> it's still storming, like I said, sorry about that. It's going to be dark and gloomy this whole time. Not a lot we can do about it for the time being. I kind of sailed around this island a little bit. It's a bit small, so I didn't quite see it. It's actually in the very northwest corner. So there's actually also a few things that we're going to do here. First off, you notice there is a shop ship. We will be doing something with that. I'm going to grab the fish while I see where it is. I need to put some bait on first, though. So let's do that real quick. Yep. Probably close enough. It is possible to waste a bait if you're not actually close enough to the fish. But I think any time, as long as that camera angle changes and you can target the fish, I think you're pretty much within range to just drop the bait. All right, so this is Rock Spire Isle. wonder how long it's been since the light and windfalls, lighthouse went dark. We're gonna be getting a lot of hints about windfall. Like I've said before, there's actually quite a lot to do there grand side the way that ray of light shone out like a shaft of gold through the cold darkness the case at it with dear gillian who are you <laughs> someone can shoot a powerful spark at the top of the lighthouse yeah. another thing for us to do of course never doubt a fish's intuition remember that okay so you also may have noticed a uh, shop ship floating around we're actually going to stop by there uh, not because i need to pick up bait i do need to pick up bait but uh, we're not actually going to get to do that here so this guy is a little bit hard to grab onto while moving he will stop if you're in his vicinity but you've got to be pretty close it's like he actually kind of bumps into you a little bit so we can just put him on an intercept course there now you also notice this one looks a little bit special it's got these purple curtains out around the outside I guess we'll see what's up with that. Oh, look at that. So yeah, this is a special shop ship. I don't know that this has been mentioned yet. I think you actually get a letter at some point about this specific shop ship. But uh, this is, I don't know, apparently not Beetle. I don't, or just Beetle with a weird helmet on his head. So he says this shop will close in seven more days. I don't know why they do this. I think this is bad personally it, the shop does not close you don't have a limited amount of time to buy this stuff it won't go away so you can safely ignore everything he says so he's obviously selling some pretty important stuff here all of which we do want to buy at some point he knows he does not mention the price he'll only do that when you look at it i guess that's what happens with expensive things so uh we can afford i think one of anything here some of these are i think the heart piece may be the most expensive item the bottle i guess we can see so that one's a mere 500 uh, which, if there was something else that's 500, I would do that. But this heart piece, this heart piece here is 950, which will, you know, pretty much deplete our wallet. And the treasure chart here is, yeah, 900. So we can only afford one thing, no matter what. I'd say we just go ahead and buy the most expensive thing. It'll free up the uh, the most space in my wallet, as well as you know, let us take care of that while we have the money. So another piece of heart there, and now we're down to 50 rupees, but that's okay. Bye. Plenty of rupees to be had along the way. So we'll definitely have to make sure to come by at some point. Like I said before, don't worry about him closing, quote unquote. That's never going to happen. Uh, we just need to stop by and buy the rest of those things at some point once we have the money. So just keep that in mind. File it away in the old memory banks, and then we can continue. Okay, so we do need to actually stop by this island. This island's a bit of an interesting one. We'll see once we actually start getting to it. So let's head over to the part we can actually climb up first. 
this sort of thing right here is basically the bread and butter of Wind Waker. This is sort of the thing that it lives or dies on. It very much tries to sell you on this exploration aspect. And if you don't like what it has to offer, that's just a large chunk of the game you're not going to like. But if you're into this sort of thing, well, it's got a lot of it for you. So this one's a little bit tricky. We kind of have to time our bomb toss so it'll explode when it's next to the rock. Because there's no place to actually drop the bomb. So uh, what I like to do is wait till it starts blinking fast. Then wait about a second and throw it. And that's usually good. Uh, <laughs> my battery just died. So, okay, give me a sec. I didn't think it was that imminent. It wasn't that long ago. Okay, give me a second. Batteries, right? One day we'll evolve beyond the need for them. Our technology will be superior. All right, so once I turn this back on, we should get going. There we go. And we've got uh, another bomb. Looks like just one more here. And good enough. All right, so there's a hole on the other side for us to go down. Looks like there's a sign here. I wonder what this says. Oh, to reach the Western Fairy Island, head west. Oh, wow, thanks. I guess that does give you a little bit of a frame of reference, though. Whoa, that was a strange effect. All right, so we've got this cave area. We're going to be seeing a few of these types of areas. It should be pretty obvious what to do, but obviously there's going to be a kink in the plan once we start actually putting it into practice. So we light up these torches. Oh, man, there's a ton of bats. So this is kind of fun, actually. Uh, the way I like to take care of this is to bring out the boomerang and just sit here and Z-target, throw, Z-target, throw. Try not to walk back into the pillar of light because you'll leave. And that's probably all of them there. Get some rupees here and there. there. May actually be a few hanging around. Yep, there it is. Sometimes some of them will just go back up to their ceiling. I guess they're smart and don't want to mess with me, but they have to eventually. And that takes care of it. That's the way I like to do it. I mean, you could try to sword fight them if you want, but I think I've said it before. Sword fighting bats in this game is a major pain because they just fly out of your way all the time. If they're too far out, there's just literally nothing you can do to hit them. So let's get the rest of our spoils. Don't need the magic or the bombs, but, well, I guess we'll grab them since they're there. And I can't not, you know? I gotta pick up everything on the ground. And we get a treasure chart from that. More stuff that we'll have to pick up later. And we're done. All right, one more thing to do in this square before we actually, uh, I'm probably going to call it after that. I'd said before, I didn't know how far we'd get in this video. I would have liked to have gotten to outset, but there's still a few more things to do before then. So maybe in the next video, probably in the next video. So uh, one more thing we need to do in this square. We need to actually head to the south part, uh, which will be in this direction. So let's get going. We're going to look for some of those ships, as you can see them right there on the distance. We're actually going to be destroying these things. This is one of the more bizarre pickups, I think, in this game. But, well, you know, we got to get it, and whether it's bizarre or not. So what I like to do here is sort of move the, uh, the reticle here to the side, and then you can hold R and sort of circle strafe these guys. It's a little bit odd because you can't, like, change the... Uh, left and right of the reticle, it'll actually move the entire ship. Then if you let go of R, you can move it independently. So you kind of have to set it and then hold R and like that's your new position. It's a little bit complicated to sort of get the hang of, but you know, you get used to it. That was actually pretty close, but still missed. So we got to get close to this. He feels like, is he sailing away from me? Like, come on. You kind of also want to be fairly close because bombs do have some travel time. And obviously, you know, trying to lead them is a little bit of a pain. There we go. So a couple shots and that guy will be taken down and that gets rid of him. All right, so we need to get rid of this thing so I can do what I need to do. So we need to actually pick up the stuff left behind. I'm not sure if I'm on this or not. No, it doesn't look like it. I'm not actually sure where it is. I didn't get a good view of it. Yeah, okay. I have no idea, so we'll take care of the other one first since I can actually see that. And it also, for stormy weather can be kind of nice because you get these little, like, lines on the water. You can actually kind of use that to judge where these pillars of light are. All right, so we grab this treasure, and uh, this is either going to be what we're looking for or not, but we still might as well grab what's in it. And this is an orange rupee, so, yeah, 100 rupees, you know, it's not nothing. And now I can grab the other one, which has the actual collectible we're looking for. Right here.
And this one just has this randomly placed piece of heart. I, like, that's so strange. I don't know. It feels like it's either from a treasure chart or from, like, some chest after a puzzle or something. It's on just some random ship out on this random square. Like, I don't know. That, you would actually get a chart that hints at this later. I think there's, like, a ship's chart or something uh, that would actually denote on your map that there is a ship with a heart piece here. But that, that just seems kind of random to me. I kind of like it. But anyway, I think that's all the exploring we're going to do for this episode. Next time, more exploring, but we should hopefully get to our next story beat. Uh, so, you know, definitely look forward to that. But uh, I, I, I can't promise we'll get there. I think so, though. It's not actually too much further. So anyway, next time we'll head back in Outset's general direction, picking up all the loot we can find on the way. Until then, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.